Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, welcome back. So in our previous lecture, we witnessed for a UAV to be to possess longitudinal static stability, it has to satisfy two conditions, which is CM0 has to be greater than 0 and CM, CM alpha has to be less than 0, right. So and we also discussed about stability, right. So it is a property of an equilibrium where the, if the system is able to return to its initial equilibrium once disturbed from it then we call the system is a stable system, right. And we also discussed about equilibrium and its properties, right. So now let us proceed ahead to figure out how various components of a UAV contribute towards stability of the system. And we also uh, studied that the stability of a system has is bifurcated into two parts. The first one is the static stability, the second part is dynamic stability where the static stability is the initial tendency of the system to come back towards its equilibrium once disturbed from it, right. So in case of dynamic stability, it talks about time history of motion of the system once disturbed from its equilibrium. So if the system is able to return to equilibrium uh, over a period of time by damping out the disturbance that was created, from, right, which has in fact disturbed from its equilibrium. So if, if it is able to return to its equilibrium, then we can say the system is both statically as well as dynamically stable. So, and we also uh, concluded that dynamic stability will guarantee static stability, but static stability may not guarantee dynamic stability, right. And we are looking at longitudinal static stability of a UAV here, right. we've considered an example. So we know the for longitudinal case the only moment that contributes that can contribute towards stability is the pitching moment, right? So which is half rho v square s c bar times c m, right? So, so this is what is going to contribute towards restoring moment. So, which is very important for a system to be stable. So, for so we need a restoring moment in one form or the other. So, in the first case, we considered a pendulum pivoted about a point O, right? And this pendulum of mass m is deflected from its or disturbed from its equilibrium. And once we leave, the, once it disturbed from its equilibrium, it tries to oscillate about the equilibrium about this pivot point. So, and finally, if there is damping, it will be able to reach that particular initial equilibrium, right? isn't it? So that happens only because of there is some restoring moment with respect to about point O by this system, right? So mg sin theta multiplied by L, the length of the pendulum is what helping your system to yeah, restore to its equilibrium, right? So that moment which helps the system to restore towards equilibrium is called restoring moment and restoring moment is essential for a system to be statically stable here, right? So, so for a longitudinal case of UAV, we have pitching moment, uh, yeah, we have only one moment, which is a pitching moment. And with this pitching moment, we should be able to generate that restoring moment. So, for this, uh, for the, for a UAV to be longitudinally stable, we have witnessed that CM variation with alpha has to be negative, right? This is DCM upon D alpha. So, so this, this is with negative slope, right? So this particular, if the, if the system have this particular variation in the linear range of angle of attack. So if the system have this CM variation with angle of attack, right? This particular trend that is shown here. 
So then we can say the system is statically stable and the other condition that is required is CM0 that is CM at alpha is 0 right this is CM0 this particular point corresponds to 0 comma CM0 and this particular point corresponds to alpha trim comma 0 that is lift CM moment is 0 so which can be considered as trim state or equilibrium state here right equilibrium So, this CM naught has to be greater than 0 to trim the aircraft at a positive angle of attack and CM alpha has to be less than 0 to have the tendency to produce restoring moment, right. So, the necessary condition is condition is CM naught has to be greater than 0 and the sufficient condition is CM alpha has to be less than 0 which is DCM upon D alpha have to be less than 0 or in other words CM2 minus CM1 upon alpha 2 minus alpha 1 for each positive change in alpha there should be a negative change in CM that is there should be a pitch down moment when there is an increase in angle of attack right. Okay. So now let us consider this wing, let us consider this particular wing, it is a rectangular wing, right. So, so it is just a wing, you know, there is nothing attached to this, it is just a wing, simple wing, straight wing. So, if we consider this wing itself as an aircraft, right, so the total lift of this aircraft is nothing but lift of the wing, is not it. And whatever the moment produced by the wing is nothing but the moment produced by the aircraft itself, right. So, by the way, where this moment will act? About the CG here, right, is not it? It is about the CG, that is how we defined. We considered a body axis system with its origin at the CG and about each of those axes, which is passing through the origin, we have three different moments, starting with rolling moment about the X axis, pitching moment about Y axis and yawing moment about Z axis, right. So, if I simply throw this, you know, if I simply throw this, what what do you expect? What do you, what do you expect uh, this this uh, wing to do? Right? It's just flipping, isn't it? So if I do do this again, it just flips, flips multiple times, right? So the position from which we started right is not able to maintain the same attitude or same state we can say so we have released it from a level state in a equilibrium condition because it is not moving it is not rotating and it is static right so i am throwing this at a particular equilibrium state but it is not able to maintain it is try it is flipping right so such a motion is so we can closely imagine this as a unstable state of this particular CG location right. So if I if I have to make this fly then I have to satisfy these conditions right CM naught has to be greater than 0 CM alpha has to be less than 0. Now what is this CM it's pitching moment and this moment is acting about CG right. So now first let us look at where is the CG, how can I find, so if I can balance this at a given location, I am taking a quad wise location right, so let us consider I am I am taking this particular quad and I am trying to balance this at this quad wise location. So, this is almost at this at this particular location, right? The CG is at this particular location. See, now it is balanced, right? About about this particular location, CG is 
balanced I should say yeah so this is the location so almost mid chord no almost not mid chord I, I should say yeah so close to mid chord so this is the location at which the current CG location is so so the moment about the CG location is making it unstable right we will see why it is making it unstable in the first place right so if I somehow can alter the CG I should know I do not know now I do not have the information whether should I take this CG behind or should I take this CG ahead to make to satisfy this particular condition CM alpha so in order to derive those conditions let us first look into the contribution of a wing towards stability for a given UAV right so let us start with that so let us assume from now we will try to represent the wing while dealing with this stability by the side view just this particular array foil will draw a particular side view of this wing and then the characteristics of this like the lift drag and aerodynamics moment about aerodynamic center will talk about the rest of this like uh, characteristics of this wing right and they are represented at the aerodynamic center which we have discussed earlier. So before going to this I would like to uh, postulate this assumptions that we are considering for the rest of this analysis. or analysis or say you can say the criteria for this entire stability analysis these are the following assumptions where the first one is we assume assume or there exist a plane of symmetry So about which the geometry is symmetric and and also the mass distribution. Yeah, and also the mass uh, mass distribution. Okay, so we have a plane of symmetry. For example, if I take this wing, say at the center, right uh, at the mid po mid portion of this pan, I can say this particular left side wing is symmetric, right? is symmetric is not it See, or the left side wing is a mirror image of uh, the left side wing is a mirror image of right side wing if I consider a plane here if I cut this wing at the mid portion of the span with a vertical plane right so about that plane the left side of the wing is mirror image of right side of the wing not just in geometry but also in mass distribution that is what it is here right. The second thing is so longitudinal controls will not generate little directional and directional forces or moments. So, what do you mean by that? Let us say, so the longitudinal control we know is an elevator. Let us say this is my uh, wing and say there is a tail in the back, right? So, if I deflect the elevator that is not going, that is only going to produce the change in the longitudinal forces which is the lift, overall lift of the aircraft is going to change and then the moment as well but it is not going to produce any rolling moment or pitching yawing moment or any side force right the force along y axis so the long and vice versa right 
and yeah so or the lateral for example if there is an aileron deflection if you deploy ailerons that are, those are not going to produce any yeah longitudinal moments like it's not going to produce any pitching moment or it's not going to alter the overall lift of the aircraft just because of the deflection right that's the same case as uh, same case with the rudder as well right and then the third assumption is uh, so aerodynamic forces and moments vary linearly with angle of attack right so that's what we assume a linear variation of aerodynamic forces and moments throughout this analysis right and we'll consider this this description or uh, the, these derivations what we are going to come up with will be valid only for linear range of angle of attack okay and the final assumption is so we'll use principle of superposition right yeah so we'll use principle of superposition where the forces the total forces acting on a uav or a, or an aircraft will be some of the forces produced by the independent components and the same as same for moments let us say if this is my this is my wing and this is my tail let us assume that right so this these two together when attached forms a aircraft and we assume it as a rigid body right and then the total forces acting on this aircraft is due or the moments acting on aircraft is due to the forces and moments created by this wing and also forces and moments created by this tail so we'll have a vectorial sum of this right forces and moments from the individual components so these are the four assumptions that we are going to consider right for our derivations here right now let's look at the wing alone contribution so so i'll try i'll just erase this part so i hope you have noted down these assumptions so from now i would like to deal this it in two halves right so why because we have bit lengthy equations during these derivations right so let's st start with so for for st longitudinal static stability we know cm not has to be greater than 0 and cm alpha has to be less than 0 so we know these two conditions the necessary and sufficient conditions here and also we have one important thing is aerodynamic forces and moments they vary linearly with angle of attack and we have a plane of symmetry and and also we use the principle of superposition at the same time we assume that the longitudinal controls are not going to affect lateral directional dynamics okay so let's look at wing contribution so what do you mean by this wing contribution so let us consider the aircraft itself is a wing right and we have mounted this wing with respect to fuselage reference line for the time being we assume that this wing cord coincides with mean aerodynamic sorry fuselage reference line let us say this is my wing and this is my cord corresponding cord which is coinciding with the fuselage reference line so the frl here stands for fuselage reference line right let's say this is this aircraft is moving 
which is with wing alone is moving at a velocity v infinity which is making an, an and this with respect to this fuselage reference line it is making an angle of attack alpha right so what else we have so we have this object right we have this body which is wing wing alone here right so we represented this wing so what else do we represent do we need to represent so in order to characterize this wing we need to define lift drag and pitching moment for the longitudinal case about a given reference point right if you define that completely then we'll be able to completely characterize this airfoil or or say wing at the same time right so let us assume with respect to leading edge right with, with respect to leading edge of this root chord let us assume the aerodynamic center is located at a distance let us say this is my aerodynamic center ac ac here stands for aerodynamic center you can take it down ac stands for aerodynamic center so ac subscript w stands for aerodynamic center of the wing here right so let us say this aerodynamic center is located at a distance x ac x a dot c subscript x a dot c is the location of aerodynamic center with respect to the leading edge of the root chord measured parallel to the fuselage reference line so what is this x ac is the location of aerodynamic center right with respect to leading edge of cr of root chord right leading edge of root chord okay this is what we emphasized like right? that's the reason why we solved three examples yesterday right so cr leading edge of the root chord measured parallel to frl so is it visible okay yeah okay now we know what is aerodynamic center which is xcac measured from the root chord here so at aerodynamic center yeah so say if this is your free stream velocity then lift will be acting perpendicular to this right which is l w is a lift of the wing isn't it at the same time you have drag of the wing acting along this free stream so say this angle is so this is acting along the free stream direction and say we have a moment about aerodynamic center mac so pitching moment assuming that the y axis is into the bird so the positive pitching moment will be pitch up notion right so this is the moment about aerodynamic center is represented by mac about this aerodynamic center here so is that all or do we have something else as well so this is an object right with some mass so it has center of gravity right so we are talking about the a dynamic system isn't it when you throw it so the resultant forces and moments will be acting about this center of gravity am i correct or not so we have to talk about cg as well let us say the cg of this object is somewhere here or say somewhere here say this is my center of gravity okay so we we are now neglecting the z component z offset no so we are now not complicating the system we assume that the cg is along the fuselage reference line here so that's a pretty good assumption isn't it so the because the lateral distribution of mass is not much here right so we can and the contribution from the zcg or say okay you can assume so to a, there is an offset in the cg right let us let us do that part as well so let us say this is my wing and this is the aerodynamic center on this chord line and the cg is at an offset uh, with a, with respect to this frl 
okay. So, so this is my Z C G, right? So this is my offset. This is my offset here. That is my Z C G. Uh, leading edge of the root chord. Let us assume this as X C G, right? Again, measured parallel to. Yeah. So this is X C G. So. This is the location of center of gravity. So this this particular point is the location of center of gravity, and ZCG is the offset there, and XCG is the off. Uh, so this is the ZCG is a vertical offset with respect to fus uh, fuselage reference line, and XCG is the longitudinal offset here or horizontal offset along parallel to the fuselage reference line with respect to leading edge of this root chord. Right? Okay, got it. Now yes, these are the required uh, variables. to go ahead with this wing contribution analysis right so for a wing you have lift and drag produced by the wing about the aerodynamic center and so yeah the same can be represented at the aerodynamic center associated with the moment about aerodynamic center right now so the the moments happen about cg because it's a free it's a rigid body right if you throw a rigid body so the moments happen about the center of gravity right so that is so with respect to the center of gravity we will now see when it flies what happened to the moment right so moment about cg so first thing is moment about cg center of gravity right cg of this wing alone configuration let's Say that moment about CG is MCG, which is equal to moment of the entire aircraft. A by C here talks about entire aircraft here. So is equals to so A by C. A by C stands for aircraft or UAV. Entire aircraft or entire UAV here, right? Now if I want to find the moment about CG, right? So now I have to so in the body frame here so now i have to resolve this lift and drag along fuselage reference line and perpendicular to fuselage reference line. why because i have the distance xcg measured parallel to fuselage reference line as well as zcg measured perpendicular to the fuselage reference line am i correct or so this is my perpendicular to fuselage reference line right these are the resultant forces which are acting perpendicular to fuselage reference line okay so there will be a contribution from lift as well as drag right so and then this is the direction in which uh, right this is the direction for forces right which are acting parallel to the along the fuselage reference line am i correct or not now so perpendicular to fuselage reference line what do you have so this is separated by an angle alpha right so the the offset is angular offset is angle alpha here why because l is perpendicular to v infinity right and this direction of this normal force is perpendicular to the fuselage reference line so these two are making an angle alpha and these two will also make angle alpha you can do it by simple mathematics right it's a simple transformation so because see this is this is 90 degrees here right so let us say this is my v infinity so this is 90 degrees and we know this angle is alpha so what will be this angle 90 minus alpha right am i correct so and we know this fuselage reference line and this uh, this uh, this pink line which is perpendicular to fuselage reference line makes an angle 90 degrees right they are perpendicular so what will be this angle so we know this angle and we want to find out this angle right so this is 90 and this is 90 minus alpha that is 90 minus 90 mi minus alpha which is alpha right so that is what alpha is here uh, similarly here alternate angles are equal so here this is alpha right so alpha is a angle of separation between drag and the fuselage reference line here okay now what we have is a drag component and the lift component so the total forces acting perpendicular to fuselage reference line is l cos alpha 
plus d sin alpha right these are the two forces acting perpendicular to schuessler's reference line and the four so what you the forces acting along this let us say this is the positive direction right so let us say this is zcg and positive direction of x is towards the nose of the aircraft here towards the leading edge of the root cord so let us say this is my positive direction and positive direction of z forces will be in the downward direction so so i have a component l sin alpha acting in this direction so along this particular direction what i have is l sin alpha and minus is the negative direction in which it is acting right minus d cos alpha okay if i consider this as the forward direction and i consider this as positive so then l contributes lift of the wing contribution is the positive contribution here l sin alpha minus d cos alpha d is acting in the along the free stream direction which is in the opposite direction the component of it will be d cos alpha which is in the negative direction that i have according to my convention right so this is l sin alpha minus d cos alpha right so now so i have one force perpendicular force and an offset between cg and the ac right so this is the momentum for this perpendicular force right so that will create a pitch up moment here am i correct or not so before that the moment about of this entire aircraft what i have is moment about aerodynamic center of wing right am i correct plus the perpendicular force which is l cos alpha minus d plus d sin alpha it is contributing towards pitch up right that's why it is positive contribution right times the momentum between cg and the aero see these forces are perpendicular force is acting at ac here right the pink which which is represented by this pink vector right which is l cos alpha plus d sin alpha multiplied by this momentum will contribute towards a positive pitching moment here and the momentum is x cg i know x cg i know x ac so if i subtract x ac from x cg i will have the corresponding momentum x ac of wing right x ac of wing isn't it at the same time i have a horizontal component here right so the component which is parallel to fuselage reference line is l sin alpha minus d cos alpha so multiplied by this vertical offset will give me give me the corresponding moment here so again this this force is acting towards the nose so about cg this is going to contribute towards pitch up motion right because y axis is into the board and the pitching moment is about y axis correct so the curl of your my fingers will give you the rotation positive pitching moment so the positive pitching moment is nose up and this force right is trying to give me a nose up motion here so this okay. so this is like plus the force l sin alpha my okay. d cos alpha right multiplied by what is the corresponding momentum is zcg right it's clear isn't it this is because of the horizontal force and the vertical offset of cg with respect to fuselage reference line this is the moment contribution because of the vertical offset by the horizontal force right and it's a positive moment and we have the vertical like vertical force and a horizontal offset with respect to cg so this entire component is going to contribute towards a pitch up motion again right and we have moment about aerodynamic center this is clear i guess so now let's let's further non dimensionalize this what i have is half rho infinity v infinity square is the reference velocity of the wing is considered as the reference velocity of the aircraft multiplied by reference wing area is considered as reference wing area of reference area of this aircraft right so times c bar is the mean aerodynamic chord of the wing is considered as reference chord length here reference length for the longitudinal direction times cm of the entire aircraft cm ac here cm a by c is nothing but cm of the entire aircraft here so half rho v square is the dynamic pressure times the area on which it is acting will will uh, get us the dimension of force 
multiplied by the momentum which is the reference length here will get us the moment di dimensions right Mom moment or torque dimensions here and multiplied by the non dimensional moment coefficient aerodynamic moment coefficient which is equals to so this is for wing right so this is this moment is due to wing which is half rho v infinity square c bar times cm ac of a dot c of wing cm about aerodynamic center of wing this is this first term so plus so we have lift sorry i'm sorry please make a correction here this is lw and dw similarly this is from the wing right so lw dw and similarly what we have is the lift contribution towards this normal force to fuselage difference line okay plus half rho v square s this lift and drag are generated from the wing so we know v infinity is at the wing and s is the reference area of the wing times half rho v square s times so cl of wing times cos alpha i am writing cos alpha as c alpha here right and similarly cd of wing times sin alpha i am writing sin alpha as s alpha times x cg minus x ac of wing okay. this is this second no the complete second term is given by this okay plus similarly what i have is half rho v square s times cl of wing times s alpha minus cd of wing times c alpha multiplied by the z offset z cg okay so so this is this corresponds to this particular second term so if i non dimensionalize this if i divide this divide this equation entire equation by half rho v square sc bar what i have is cm of aircraft i simply write it as cm now cm itself is the cm of entire aircraft which is equals to cm ac of wing plus cl of wing times cos cos alpha plus cd of wing times sin alpha multiplied by x bar cg minus x bar ac of wing right okay and then plus what i have is cl of wing times cos sin alpha right minus cd of wing times cos alpha multiplied by right z bar cg okay so let's see this contribution is very very less no further uh, the zcg value will be very less and assuming a small angle of attack right if you assume small angle of attack sin alpha will be alpha multiplied by zcg small alpha and um, alpha is already small zcg will is will be further small so we can neglect this particular contribution and then including this if you can notice cdw right so drag is so is far less than the lift coefficient here right at least 1/10 one of 1/10 one order so it will be 0.0 kind of no so multiplied by this small number will further make it small so we can neglect this vertical contribution so we we are now neglecting this contribution so neg and also 
if you assume small angle of attack, so this CD alpha, so cos alpha is 1 and sin alpha is alpha. So, CD times alpha will be further a small quantity. So, we can also neglect this particular quantity. So, how we are neglecting? We assume, assume small alpha and Z C G. Right? So, the offset will is very, very small comparatively. This by neglecting these components, what we have is what we end up with is CM is equals to CM AC of the wing, aerodynamic center of the wing plus CL of wing times X bar CG minus X bar AC of wing, where where all X bar subscript anything is equals to S subscript upon C bar, right. Let it be XCG, XCG bar is equals to XCG upon C bar, XAC is, XAC bar is XAC upon C bar, right. And ZCG bar is also like ZCG upon C bar, fine. So, we now got what is the pitching moment equation and we know the pitching moment variation, if we have a linear variation then we can express the aerodynamic coefficient, moment coefficient here as a linear function of angle of attack by CM naught plus CM alpha into alpha. So, this is a straight line equation, right? Y is equals to mx plus c, where m is the slope here, x is the uh, uh, alpha in our case, x is alpha in our case and m, CM naught is the offset y uh, or you can say y intercept there, right? Do you remember this plot? And, and also remember our assumption, one of our assumptions where the aerodynamic forces and moments have a linear variation with angle of attack. So, what do you mean by linear variation in angle of attack? We can write this as a straight line equation, y is equals to mx plus c. So, where, so say this is my cm and this is my alpha. So, this slope is that cm alpha and this y intercept is cm naught, right. So, y is equals to mx plus c is represented as CM naught plus CM alpha into alpha here is equals to, so CM AC of wing plus what is the CL of wing? How can we express in the linear regime? It is a total lift coefficient of the wing, variation of lift coefficient with angle of attack, is not it? So, in general, so this is your CL alpha, okay. So, in the linear regime, you have C L naught here, right? And you know C L alpha, D C L upon D alpha. So, similarly, C L is equals to C L naught plus C L alpha into alpha. Y is equals to M X plus C. So, so C L of wing will be C L naught of wing plus C L alpha of wing times alpha of wing multiplied by the corresponding moment arm, which is X C G bar, non-dimensional moment arm, which is X C G bar minus X A C of bar of wing. So, you can see this is non-dimensional, x bar is non-dimensional, x is dimensional. Yesterday we derived in terms of x, right, we solved those three examples in terms of x, which is a dimensional quantity. But here x bar is a non-dimensional quantity. We divided this by a characteristic length, for longitudinal case it is aerodynamic, mean aerodynamic chord and for lateral directional case it will be span of the aircraft, okay. Span of the wings, yeah, span of aircraft is span of wing. So, here uh, we have arrived at an expression where which is uh, which is at least having the terms that we are interested in, is not it? What are we interested in? To figure out what will be C m naught and C m alpha of this UAV, is not it? So, yeah, here the UAV is having only wing, right? So, we want to know whether this wing is giving C m naught positive and C m alpha negative. If that is the case, then we can say wing is contributing towards static stability, longitudinal static stability. Right. So, now let us look at, so by comparing the coefficients of alpha, so alpha of wing is nothing but alpha. We assume the wing is not, in, uh, does not face any interference here and further 
there is no incidence angle of the wing with respect to fuselage reference line. So, in that case, the angle of attack at the wing is equals to angle of attack of the aircraft itself, right? So, where alpha is the aircraft angle of attack, which is also equivalent to wing angle of attack here, in, in this particular case, right? So, by comparing the constants and coefficients, what I arrive is it CM naught is equals to CM AC of wing plus CL naught of wing times X bar CG minus X bar AC of wing, right? So, take this to here, otherwise and by comparing the constants and coefficients of alpha, right? CM alpha is equals to CL alpha of wing times X bar non-dimensional momentum, which is X bar CG minus X bar AC of wing. Okay, so we have arrived at the required two conditions: CM naught condition and CM alpha condition. These are the two conditions. So what we have arrived at is CM naught is it is CM naught is CM AC of wing, right? So it depends upon moment about aerodynamic center. So, it depends upon the type of aerofoil you are using, whether it is a symmetric aerofoil, whether it is a cambered aerofoil or a reflex aerofoil, right? Plus CL naught of wing, right? Times X bar CG minus X bar AC of wing. Am I correct? So, this is what CM naught is dependent upon. And CM alpha is equals to CL alpha times of wing times CM alpha of the entire aircraft is because of CL alpha of the wing times the corresponding X bar CG minus X bar AC of wing. Right. So, okay. Now we want CM alpha has to be negative, right? Isn't it? How can we make CM alpha negative? So, these are the conditions for longitudinal static stability which we have to do. CM alpha has to be negative. So, we have CM alpha as CL alpha times of wing times the momentum. When this can happen? If, let us look at this first condition. If CM alpha has to be less than 0, then CL alpha of wing times X bar CG minus X bar AC of wing should be less than 0. Am I correct? Since CL alpha is, since CL alpha of wing is always positive, right? As we increase the angle of attack, we have, we, the lift will increase irrespective of whether it is a symmetric aerofoil, cambered aerofoil or a reflex aerofoil. Am I correct or not? So, CL alpha is always positive, which implies X bar CG minus X bar AC of wing, AC of wing must be greater than, must be less than 0. So, this particular quantity has to be negative here, which means the X CG should be less than X AC of the wing here. So, that is what the conclusion is. From here, what I can say is X bar CG has to be less than X bar AC of wing. Right. So, this is the conclusion to make this CM alpha less than 0. Okay. Is it clear? What I mean here? The first, the sufficient condition we, we try to arrive only when this particular quantity here has to be less than 0, which means the CG distance has to be less than aerodynamic center. Right? Less than the, so it should lie before the aerodynamic center. What do you mean by? X CG less than X AC. So, the CG is here, it should be less than X AC, which means it has to lie ahead of this aerodynamic center. Am I correct? So, if I place this aerodynamic center, sorry, C, center of gravity ahead of this aerodynamic center, I do not have much control with aerodynamic center. Once I have, I have a wing, I have an aerodynamic center fixed to it. Right? It is, I cannot vary it. If I have to vary it, I have to change the entire plan from geometry. So, the variable that I have in my hand is the CG. 
right? So here, if I have to achieve this particular condition, or if I have to achieve the stability, just like normal pendulum, right? So it oscillates about the equilibrium point. If I have to achieve such a strategy, then I have to make the CG, force the CG to lie ahead of this aerodynamic center, which is the variable in my hand, right? So let's see how that variable, how can I claim that that variable is in my hand? Before just proceeding to that, let's also look at the other condition where CM0 has to be positive, right? If CM0 has to be positive, both the, so let's first talk about this. If moment about aerodynamic center, right? of wing, this is 0 for a symmetric. So, CMAC of wing, CMAC is equals to 0 for symmetric aerofoil. So, it is less than 0 for cambered aerofoil, positively cambered aerofoil. So, I am taking that liberty. So, cambered aerofoil is positively cambered aerofoil, right, in my opinion. So, and is greater than 0 for reflex aerofoils, which we have discussed earlier. Right. Okay. When you talk about symmetric aerofoil, right, irrespective of this, first thing is that the CG has to be less than aerodynamic center, right. So, this condition we have arrived irrespective of whether the wing uh, is made out of cambered aerofoil or a reflex aerofoil or a symmetric aerofoil, right? So, irrespective of that geometry of the uh, wing, wing cross section, we have to make sure that CG is ahead of the aerodynamic center for a wing alone to be stationary, which means the difference is negative, right? So, CL0, if you consider a symmetric aerofoil, this is 0 and this is 0, CM0 is 0, right? Am I correct? So, uh, and if you consider a symmetric aerofoil, uh, a scambered aerofoil, this particular quantity is negative. CL0 is positive for a cambered aerofoil, positively. But XCG minus XAC is negative. If I want to fly this in a stable configuration, then this CG has to lie ahead of the aerodynamic center, right? This particular quantity is negative. So, two negative quantities contribute towards CM0 negative. That means the aircraft will immediately dip down to a negative trim angle of attack. Yeah, if I consider a reflex aerofoil, this will be positive and this contribution will be negative again. Even for reflex aerofoil, CL0 is positive. But you have to make sure, you have to then operate at a very less value of this XCG minus XAC so that the resultant CM0 remains positive for you, for the UAV, right? So, is it clear? So, for me to make this CM0 positive, I need to first look into whether which kind of cross section I am using, whether it is a combat, symmetric or reflex. If it is symmetric, there is no point, CM0 will automatically become 0, right? Then I have to continuously create an additional moment from somewhere. So, let us consider this, right? So, this is made out of symmetric aerofoil. If you can see this particular wing and a boom, right? So, I have a wing and boom uh, set up here. So, this is made out of symmetric aerofoil here, right? So, uh, then CM0 will be 0 altogether because the CM about aerodynamic center which is one fourth of this chord which is at this particular location that we have marked here, right? So, this is the aerodynamic center, uh, aerodynamic center location so, and it is a symmetric aerofoil. You can see the distribution is even about this particular chord line. This is the chord line you can see, right? And yeah, this becomes 0. Now, I may not be able to generate a moment from this particular surface. So, what I need to do is, I have to place some other surface either ahead or behind to make sure that this particular wing alone configuration along with that particular additional surface produces CM0 positive, right? That is what, right? If I locate a particular surface at certain angle here, if I place that surface, a lifting surface at certain angle and place it, keep it like that, right? then it will produce an additional moment about CG that may help to achieve this CM0 positive, okay, got it, right. So, that is where, that is, the, that is where we need a tail, right, for a cambered aerofoil, we need a tail, even for a cambered aerofoil, let us say, if I take a cambered aerofoil here, CM AC is negative and this particular quantity is negative, so I need CM0 to be positive, 
but uh, how can I achieve by adding one more surface which can make this force this system to produce that CM0 positive. Right? That we will see how, how to achieve that particular CM0. Now coming back to this example, so I have this yeah, wing, it is a cambered aerofoil you can see it is a cambered aerofoil. Right? I just it, I just happened to pick it up from my lab. Right? So I do not even know the details but it looks as if it is a more a flat bottom and then maybe a 6 series aerofoil I guess here. Right, so yeah, or a five series zero four. Yeah. Uh, so initially, do you remember? So when I throw, uh, when I was trying to throw this object, right? So it is trying to flip, right? Is it not? It's trying to flip. Why? Because here we witness that the CG is almost, almost close to the midpoint of the cord, mid cord of this fuse uh, of this wing, wing, right? Maybe, maybe at least behind the quarter cord. So, see this is the location where I am able to balance this bow object, right. So, that means the that is this, so the CG is close to this particular location here. If you notice the CG is close to this particular location. So, that means the CG is behind the aerodynamic center. So, we know aerodynamic center yesterday we calculated for different configurations, right. So, aerodynamic center, so for a rectangular wing we do not have any taper here. So, it, lo it is located at close to quarter chord of this particular cross section, is not it. So, quarter chord may be up, may be close to this location, right. So, but the CG is behind this quarter chord because of which your wing alone is behaving unstable, right, is not it. So, let us just try to shift this CG before this aerodynamic center, right, okay, and try to fly this again and see whether our derivation makes sense or not, no, whatever. So, it is it's highly non-intuitive, is not it? Why? Because see, we were able to say this condition that CM alpha has to be less than 0 only after deriving this particular equation. This is where we are able to make a decision that, okay, the CG has to be ahead of aerodynamic center. Uh, we cannot directly looking at this aerofoil and I know where is the aerodynamic center. I am, I cannot comment about what should be the CG location directly, is not it? That is what we discussed just before starting this derivation. So, now let us try to shift the CG ahead of this aerodynamic center and fly this again and see whether this derivation makes sense or not. Yeah, so now we have added some weights here in the front of this wing just to make sure that the CG is shifted ahead of this aerodynamic center. Now, let us see how to locate this aerodynamic center, let us quickly. Uh, I need I need some support. Yeah, Prabhjit, can you please help me? Yeah. So, so I need some support here. Uh, I'm taking I'm using this scale to measure uh, what is the cord cord length here in the first place. So the cord length is about 22.5. So here it is 22.5 centimeters is the overall cord. No, I'm measuring it from root to tip here. Right. So it is 22. Point 5. So, 22.5 upon 4 is approximately 5.6, yeah, right. So, 5.6 is your location of the aerodynamic center. So, if I take 5.6 from the leading edge, right, so be towards the trailing edge, so I will be able to find out the aerodynamic center. So, 5.6 here is close to this marking. So, we have a marking here, this is the aerodynamic center. Now, let me just see whether the CG with this addition of weights have shifted has shifted ahead of this aerodynamic center or not. No. At least I, I expect it to be close to this aerodynamic center. See, so it is almost close to this aerodynamic center. With the addition of these weights, it has shifted close to this aerodynamic center here. So, this is the aerodynamic center and the CG is almost close to the aerodynamic center, right. So, I will tell you the reason why I have uh, done that, almost close to reason. So, now, so can I throw this, but this time I expect this to fly because our derivation should hold, hold true. If for the derivation to hold true, this should fly, is not it? So, Prabhajit is going to help us. So, we will have a similar demonstration what we had it in our previous lecture, yeah, lecture series. So, I will try to check this out from my hands, right. So, Prabhajit, let us hope this will fly, right, is not it? I will try to repeat this, right. So, 
right it's able to fly isn't it it's not by chance and let's try this one more time so i'm again trying to throw this with the same attitude yeah right it's not at least behaving in a weird way it's not flipping back right it's not behaving unstable so so one more time so this is funny So, perfect. Do you accept? Yes, sir. Do you accept that this equation holds? Yes, definitely. Yeah, fine. Good. Just come here. So, without without this weight, so the CG, uh, yeah, the CG is almost close to this point. So, which is aft the aerodynamic center here. See, we have located with this blue pin. Uh, the, we have located the aerodynamic center with this blue pen. So my finger uh, points the current CG location without any additional loads. This is just a wing alone without any additional loads. So it is aft the aerodynamic center here. So when I try to throw the body right in this particular configuration, so this will try to flip. It is behaving unstable. So uh, let me do it again. I will try to throw it with a higher velocity. So I cannot help. Yeah, this equation holds true then.